Just curious. Does Descartes' tombstone read, I thought, therefore I was? Hmm. Well, we're not here to talk about that today. We're here to talk about this guitar. In today's video, we will go over binding the top of this guitar with cream plastic binding. I got this binding from Tom Bartlett's site. It's really good binding. It, it's easy to work with. I recommend it highly. But before I bind the top, I need to carve the top at the end of the guitar near where the neck joins the body. In order to do this, I'm going to have to make a hand plane with a curved bottom like this one. In fact, this one that I got uh, the blade from Hawk Tools as well as the plans to build it and they recommend you then shape it to a shape that you like. I made it so that I could I could press it like this. The reason why I needed this so that I could get a curved bottom. It worked as intended. It's made out of Castello boxwood, which is the same wood I used to make the trim block for my red special trim. Because I had routed the cavity for this uh, before I planned to carve the top, the, the wood was thin, so I actually had to put a glue a piece of maple behind it to give it some thickness so that I could carve deeper. But it did go through. Behind there is, is the maple, so that, that's unfortunately a problem, but the sunburst should cover it. You can barely notice the carving, but if you look there, you can see that it is carved. Not quite enough. It, it flattens out here as you go further back because there's an arm contour. The problem I have to solve now. So this is the, uh, the device I came up with to route the binding for the top um, to follow the contour, the, the arm contour and all that. And the problem is this was designed to ride up and down and follow the contour of the top and that would work fine on, on an acoustic guitar or even a Strat style guitar if the arm contour was not very severe. I found out that more was better. The problem is that makes for quite an angle. Now you can see my problem. You can see that there's no way that's going to go down low enough to even cut because of, of this area here. And this ridge is too far away from the cutting surface. It needs to be very close, but not so close that it, it loses its purchase on top of the uh, edge of the guitar. So I have to invent something that's going to work. I built this around, around this. So once I had that, I thought, well, the weight of this could, could cause the, uh, the router to skate off of the body of the guitar and cause some damage. So I wanted to counter, counterbalance it. So I came up with this idea for a platform with a a tower that had a couple of pulleys and a rope and a five pound weight in the back because it turns out this is a little less than five pounds and I would rather it spring upward when let go than, than fall down.
Well, I hope this is going to work. I did not want to buy a lathe, but it looks like the only way I can get this done. Just epoxy this on here. Showtime. Okay, I've actually managed to thin it a bit through here. So the heat should allow me to bend it.
preposition. Tape. Okay. So far I'm around to here with acetone. Using acetone to glue the binding in is a trick I learned from Texas Toast Guitars. Matt.
Well, looking good. I just have this last little piece to uh, cut and put into position, glue it in, and then I'm on to the next step. Planing. Whenever I can use a plane instead of sanding or filing or whatever, it's always nicer. So I need to form this to fit into there. I'm going to do it by making this this shape and this shape. This presses between them after it's been heated. And there it is. Well, using little slivers of wood instead of a, a putty slurry, Work pretty well at filling those holes, those six holes. You can see them, but barely. The finish will probably make them more obvious, but this is the worst one. Hey, it's a prototype. If I had to do this all over again, what would I do differently? Well, 
First of all, I would route the cavity for the, the toggle switch a bit shallower. That would give me more room for the carving I needed, needed to do at that end of the guitar. Also, the way I carved that end, I started near the sides and carved it up towards the neck. Unfortunately, it's, it's a bit of a slope towards the neck. In the future, what I would do is I would carve it further back from the neck and then bring it down. More, more, of, a, more of this kind of a shape than what I've got, which is more of this. So that's what I would do differently there. The other thing I would do differently, that tower and pulley system needs improvement. It doesn't move freely enough. In the future, the pulleys would have ball bearings, and I'd be looking for other ways to make it move more freely. I would also use a lighter counterweight because as it was, I had to use my finger to hold the router down against the body while trying to rotate the guitar in the jig to get all the binding. In the future, I will not be using acetone to bind binding to wood. It makes it very easy. You just tape the binding down. Once you've got the binding bent and in place and taped down, you just put the, the acetone around it and it, it's all fine. Using glues, you've got to lift the tape off, put the glue down and put the tape back on and just keep going around it to do it. Uh, it's, it's harder. But the problem I found with using acetone is that when you're when it melts the plastic binding material, the melted binding seeps into the grain and you end up with a, a kind of a jagged or blurred looking edge. But in my case, it's not a big deal because it's completely covered up by the sunburst finish. So that's it. Now it's time for me to go and do something completely different.